What's up, gamers? Rainy Potato here with a new profile to teach beginners how to start the game and advance to fully unlocking your profile and defeating the game. Uh, we have just defeated the prologue. Uh, I didn't include that part because it's pretty standard. Uh, and we're here with the Altar of Hope at the first time. At your first trip to the altar after completing the prologue, you can only use the working fields. To recall a thing My suggestion here is to make it real only you unlock in items. You're looking for affinity increasing items, and you're looking for food. Those are the two main things you're looking for. So I suggest taking your first five candles, just coming here. Stale bread, okay. That's what we want. Theoretically, we could go to trinkets. Speed is actually pretty good. Not really relevant until Act 3, though. Uh, we're looking for affinity increasing items. It's very important to get those early. Stress heal is good, I suppose. We could also look at combat items to try and get a healing salve early, but... I like this strategy here. Armor repair kit. Kind of okay. And the final unlock. Taunt. Alright, no affinity items. But we got bread. Bread's really important. It helps our pathetic HP. Pathetic starting HP. Now, you can win on a fresh profile. It's actually not uncommon at all for experienced players. And even some new players may find success. I don't know. You just really have to have the fundamentals down. Now, our strategy is, this is Act 1. We do not have to take any lair bosses. Our team is not set up that well to tackle any lair boss. Either the Dreaming General who has been buffed, or the Librarian in the Sprawl, who is also among the hardest in the game. So, we are likely to just skip altogether. Skip the lair boss and just try to tackle the boss like that all right now before we set our party you always want to look at quirks very important early riser and stiff knees those kind of cancel each other out actually pretty worse than cancel out since this is uh, not guaranteed daredevil is pretty good although i don't like the vulnerable But that's just extra damage. I like putting my high women in third. So we can use Duelist Advance. Um, without having to go back. We have a Grave Robber with Quick Draw. That's pretty good. She's alright anywhere two through four. Frankly, but I like her in two or three. Alright, the Yips is one of the worst quirks in the game. You just get randomly blinded. Nocturnal is mostly worthless. She's not a damage dealer at all. And it's uh, conditional. So yeah, I like the shuffle setup. You can also set high women here, but like I said, I like using Duelist Advance. Now we head to the valley for the first time. I will say number one tip for new players actually read the tutorials when they pop up and just go through it basically everything you need is in there for the most part at least beginner mechanics it's a pretty well done tutorial Right, this first fight doesn't really matter that much. Um, she does the most stress damage. Now, these guys normally give disease. 
but in the valley they cannot disease you. However, they all cause stress, and stress will not be fully healed at ends. Only up, you'll only get a partial stress heal at ends. But she applies horror. So I think we'll take her out first. All right. We can't actually kill right now. So we'll just do duelist advance. This gives us repose tokens, which gives us good action economy. See, that's already a bad start. Stress plus horror. Now, what I'm going to do here, obviously you won't notice if you're new, but these guys can only use their chomp, which is their stress attack, from the first two rows. So if you use Rampart to knock them back, they cannot use their chomp attack. And as you see, Riposte counterattacks. Like I said, that's one of the best action economy generators in the game. All right, we need to do three damage because the Widow is taking two damage a turn with Blight and we want to kill this turn. And she has no death blow resist. Let us take a closer you can look check with uh, all of you as as to see is. what their skills are. You can also take a closer look. Obviously, if you see death blow without a... Uh, number here, just a line. That means she has no death blow resist at all. I'm just going to take the guaranteed kill. This will always do at least three damage. Now she'll die before she acts. I just use Wicked Slice here because it's my strongest damaging attack. See, we're at two stress. That will not all be healed at the end. And then Crush will take care of this problem. You get five mastery points in denial, so you get a much more for fortunate start. Yeah, relics and baubles, you just earn them on your journey. All right, Valley complete. Now in your first run, you really shouldn't be focused on winning. Although, I mean, winning is obviously best. It's a game, you know, you wanna, you wanna win. You should be focusing on candles and hero unlocks. So we're gonna be doing both of that. We didn't do this at the crossroads, which I should have done. You want to see the hero goals because these get you an extra two candles. Uh, Barristan wants to visit a hero shrine. And obviously we want to do that anyways to unlock skills. Land the killing blow on pillagers. Those are road fights. So we got to remember if we can get the killing blow with Audrey on pillagers. Visit two hoarders is probably pretty hard with only two regions. And we don't really want to visit hoarders at all. Assistant encounters we should be able to do, hopefully. Alright, I'll go ahead and use this on our tank. This will give him occasional taunt, which is okay. First, I always like to select my route, see where we're going. Consider your position and plan accordingly. Uh, in region in denial, you can only do one of two regions. All right, so we have every uh, choice you get here, it'll have a condition which will affect how the region plays. In this case, this will give us extra locations and it will guarantee scout the locations for us. Here, it'll give uh, extra academic caches, which is loot, and will also guarantee scout them. The second line is a um, goal. It's a region goal that you have to meet to get the region reward. 
So if we visit an oasis, which there are extra oases and they're guaranteed to be scouted, we will get an extra mastery point. Now it's notable, these goals are always scouted. No matter what the condition is, if you have a goal, the goal will be scouted. So if we choose the sprawl, the hoarder will automatically be scouted for us. Uh, obviously that will let us avoid the hoarder if we want to for the most part. But it's also notable if you don't care about the reward for the goal, this can also be used as basically free scouting for a certain node. Like say if it's the goal is to avoid the hospital and you really want to see the hospital. If you see an option like that, then you can go see the hospital. You'll lose the reward, obviously, but it's still free scouting. Now, both of these rewards are pretty good. Academic caches give you extra money. They give you food and they give you other loot. Along with uh, baubles, although baubles will not be that important to us because we do not have good trinkets unlocked currently. And this gives us bleed resist, which is pretty good. But oases offer mineral spring water. They're the only place you can get mineral spring water. And mineral spring water is not only a heal, it's also a stress heal. It gives you a 10% heal and a uh, th stress heal of three. And here we're getting extra oases and we'll get an extra mastery for going here. And of course, well, Oasis recently, they made the change at 1.0. You'll have two heroes, but they'll usually agree, which helps your affinity. So we're going to go ahead and go to the Tangle. Getting Mineral Spring Water, getting those extra heals will be clutch for the end game. Trenches and or if we just the front line die in the early game. That was never fought. Your next step before you do anything, you'll want to go to the Provisioner and see what is on offer. Priced. Now, if you're a new player, you'll always have a Radiant Flame unlocked. This is easy mode, and you can attach it to your coach. Uh, I'm not going to play on easy mode because I don't need to. But if you're new and struggling, uh, probably recommended. Uh, the uh, the buffs are always different. They choose from a pool and get progressively stronger. All right, first thing, so you can use these tabs to uh, quick look through things. Uh, stagecoach items are bought with baubles. At the first in, until you unlock more baubles from the Altar of Hope, which is a thing, you won't likely won't be able to buy anything here. These are also not generally not good value until you really know what you're looking for. Uh, and you only have one stagecoach slot for a stagecoach item. In the so I really, rec I really buy stagecoach items at all. And here are the trinkets. At base, you don't have many trinkets unlocked. They're mostly these common ones. Although you do have these normal uh, rare ones that just give you flat bonuses rather than giving you smaller bonuses with downsides. Um, once you start unlocking trinkets, trinkets are region based for the most part. You'll find certain trinkets going to certain regions. Uh, you'll just have to learn which ones go where. But early on, you don't really have that much of a selection of trinkets. Academic studies also provide rare trinkets that you can't find any anywhere else. So those can often be good early on, although some of the trinkets are just not that great. Now, out of all these trinkets, we have Blight, Resist, which doesn't matter in re in uh, Denial because there's no Blight because the Fetter doesn't exist. Healing Received is pretty good. The Debuff Resist doesn't matter for most teams. Like, say, Grave Robber, it wouldn't matter. Uh, debuff Resist and Disease Resist is pretty good, but you don't like Minus Stun Resist because the final boss does stun. However, this trinket is incredible. This is one of the best values you can get. You get stress resistance. So 20% 20 of the time you'll just randomly resist a stress that you gain. And you get death blow resistance. Making you more resistant, obviously, to getting killed. You lose debuff resistance, which kind of sucks, but 
The stress resist more than makes up for it. This is the only trinket. There's also a weaker one that's 15%, I think, that you can buy. This is the only trinket I'd recommend you buy here at the first inn. And we'll probably put it on our tank, man at arms. We can also probably move it around. All right, next we'll go for in items. Here you can get food. Food is good. You can also get affinity increasing items. Right now we only have whiskey flask available, which is unfortunate. But I like buying out all the affinity items. We're not going to use them right now, but our goal is to use them in the future. I'm not sure if I want to buy max bread. We probably do. Actually, let's go ahead. I'm pretty sure we're going to want bread for all of our heroes. Each hero will eat one food item and will gain max HP for the next region. Don't be afraid of spending all your relics here. You basically want to do that for the most part. All right. So here you have heals. These heals are conditional. You can only use them uh, if a hero is either bleeding, blighted, or burned. So these are very good. I just generally don't spend money on them. However, Laudanum, this is your stress heal. It also removes horror. I basically always buy out all of these. Especially early on when it's hard to handle stress, I always buy out all of these. Frankly, in my own runs, I mostly always buy out the stock of Laudanum. It's just super helpful to keeping stress down. Now, we could buy some Glimmers of Hope, but I don't actually think we need them. Mostly, you don't have to mess with the flame much if you kind of understand uh, how the game works and how Loathing works. Although, Loathing can hurt us. The main thing you want is you do not want to face an ambush, which is what happens when you get to zero flame. So, I'll go ahead and buy it. I'm not sure if it's necessary or not. Now we can equip our items. I'll give Barristan since he is our tank. He has defenders so he can guard people. Give him uh, the stress resist and the death blow resist. Now it doesn't really matter who you give these other items to. It does matter for some, but in this case it doesn't matter at all. We'll eat all the bread. You'll see their HP increases. Getting bread in that first wave of unlocks is really important. The rest of these don't really matter. So you don't want to use affinity items at N1. Because at N1, uh, it reduces your chances of relationships on either end. You can open the relationship tab here. You can also press R to open this directly. Uh, they all start at 9. And you see these little bars represent tranches that change the chance of relationship. You can always hover, hover over and see uh, your chance of relationship. And also uh, what different buffs are giving you the change in relationship. As you see, there's no chance of relationship here. It's 5% base either way, negative or positive. But because of the in buff or debuff, depending on your view. You cannot get a relationship at all here unless you move into a tranche. We obviously cannot move into this positive tranche, which is 14, no matter what we do at this end, particularly, because relationships are formed at the end and only at the end. But if you have, like, playing cards or something that can also do negative affinity, it's an RNG item, then that can push you into the negative tranche, which can have a chance of negative relationship. So first in, never use affinity items, though you do want to buy them and hoard them for the next in. That is the ideal. All right, then the next process is the mastery trainer. As we said, you get five mastery. You'll definitely want to read these carefully because they... Unlike Dark Dungeon 1, you get special effects for the most part on most skills. 
not just the flat stat increases. So you definitely want to take the time and read. Uh, bolster is an automatic upgrade. You always upgrade this first. This gives you a stress heal of two, not only on yourself, but also on an ally. Of course, the there's a threshold. You have to be at five stress to be able to use this or have a hero that's on five stress for it to be uh, usable. But this is notable because once you start getting to four stress, that is when you start getting negative affinity barks in combat and on the road. You can also get negative uh, barks on the road through certain quirks, but we don't have any of those right now. So this heal gets you from five to three below the threshold where you start having negative affinity barks. So this is very, very clutch to handling stress. I suggest for most of your early journeys, bring a man at arms or a jester who will be unlocked in the next, uh, next section, the next run. But man at arms is probably the strongest hero in the game. It's between him and the Plague Doctor. So, yeah. Bring him for bolster. We probably want to upgrade one of her skills. We can either upgrade Poison Dart, which will double, double her dot damage. Or we can upgrade Pick the Face, which is a very strong attack. Now, obviously if you're new, you won't know this, but the Tangle has a lot of block. Enemies start out with block. So pick the face is actually pretty good for getting through the block. You'll see it ignores block, but if you hit an enemy, it will also uh, get rid of one block, just like any attack would. And you will not get the minus block penalty for it. Uh, one move I like to upgrade immediately is Duelist Advance. As you'll see, you get an extra post token. That's basically an extra turn. Because repost counterattacks, remember, on attack. And you also get a dodge token, which will help you not get hit. So that's generally a first upgrade. For Plague Doctor, their only damaging ability is Noxious Blast. Obviously, we have Incision, but it can't be used from the back rank where she is. So ideally, she's... Uh, in three but with grave robber you want pick to the face so uh, your plague doctor has to be in three this gives you a six point dot on the front row so this is a very strong upgrade uh, blinding gas doesn't do that much obviously incision we're not using battlefield medicine increases the heal slightly and will remove dots on both heroes but it's not really necessary an ounce of prevention is just too slow to use for the most part. So now we have two left. We obviously want the Grave Robber. I think we can do both skills on the Grave Robber. We like Poison Darts because of the range. This in Pistol Shot is our only rank 4 attacks. Attacks that can hit rank 4. So I like Poison Darts. The main problem with this move is obviously... This only increases the top end of your damage range, so it's pretty RNG. But it also does increase the crit rate, which gives you... This would, with crit, be our highest damage ability. At least direct damage. And it also pierces block. Crush, obviously... Increases his attack. He doesn't have an increased attack yet. Take aim is a really good upgrade, although it's not as great in like this phase because you really just want to duelist advance and then start hitting. Uh, but it also in it's also not bad in like guaranteeing you can hit back row with a crit here. Of course, our crit is only nine with pistol shot. We can probably do take aim. We're not going to use it every fight, unfortunately. One thing about take aim is crits can heal stress as well. So take aim, normally you want it with the AoE attack that we do not have unlocked. 
It's really between pick to the face and take aim. I think I probably like pick to the face. I'm going to talk myself into it. Take aim is kind of slow for what we're doing right now. All right, the rest of these items we're going to save. We don't need to reduce stress because we only have the one stress here. Like I said, we don't want to use affinity items. We don't need this right now. It would be better to save these for the bosses. For the boss round. I don't think I need these to survive. Especially because we're going to the Tangle. And we're going to see extra Oases. Alright, so once you're fully done, you want to make sure you have everything done. Normally, you check your stagecoach to make sure it's repaired. But obviously, this is the first in, so you don't actually need to check that make sure you have everything equipped which we do definitely just want to double check everything before you get out of the inn all right normally at the screen you'll obviously see your relationships but obviously we can't get relationships here the screen is also just really cool so you can savor it anyway here we are to our first region. The Tangle does have performance issues if your computer isn't great. I think it does even on like normal computers. I don't know. I have a pretty weak computer, so it doesn't handle the rain here very well. Rewards only. All right. Now, obviously, most of the time you'll get a partial scout, depending on what you have. Interesting path. So we'll open with a watchtower. If you get an early watchtower, it's worth it. Obviously now we can only see the watchtower. Depending on what happens. Um, you always want to scout out a region before you start moving. So this is kind of a downside because this is kind of a dead node because we already know our path. But it's not like we can avoid it. Uh, we're going to go left. We know that no matter what we scout. Cash will give us food, relics, and baubles like we said. Hero Shrine will give us a skill. Unlock. Oasis is a region goal. This will also give us um, mineral spring water like we said. Most of the time it will give you mineral spring water. Hopefully it does. It, I think it should always do that, but... Currently in the game, you can not get it. And then we can choose between a lair, which is a boss fight. We're not doing the boss fight, but doing the early fights can get you money. And also, I guess I should also point this out. Certain locations will just give you candles for going to. And once we reach a road, we'll explain more about the road conditions. So we just travel along a road. All right. So we've now scouted this road. Uh, roads now have conditions. You can get one of five conditions. It can be a safe road. Uh, we don't have a safe road. Sh oh, it is a safe road. So it's a little hard to see. It's not pointed out good. If you see a road that's like this with nothing on it, including the question mark gone, it's a safe road. Meaning nothing will happen on happen on this road. It's completely safe. Now, if it has a question mark, then you don't actually know it's going to happen. You can also have fights. This will bring you up against a pillager or gaunt mash. And you will fight them and get pretty weak rewards for the most part. But they're also pretty weak foes. Then you have hazards, which will reduce your armor. And you have rough patches, which will reduce your wheels. Now, if your wheels or armor is at zero, and you hit another rough patch, or you hit a uh, hazard and lose one of your armor or wheels, then you will face an urgent repair fight, which is very challenging. You definitely want to avoid those early on with only two armor and two wheels. It's kind of hard to avoid. But that is the preference, obviously. Also, wheels 
give you extra traveling heal if they're full, and armor gives you an extra block token if you're full. So keep that in mind when you're looking at a route. I generally don't take that into account for the most part. I take note. Nodes are more important, these locations. And obviously here is loathing. That's up here. Uh, the game will get harder the higher the loathing is. You'll get faster flame drain and enemies will get stronger. Uh, you just want to avoid getting to the final loathing stage because that will give you maximum loathing and it'll buff the final boss as well as giving you a negative based on the act. In this act, I believe it's stress it'll give us. Uh, you reduce loathing by doing fights. Although, uh, it depends on the fight you're doing. Uh, doing normal lair fights and doing normal road fights will not uh, in decrease your loathing. Only doing like fights here, like the Creature Den, uh, the Cultist Encounter, or the Resistant Encounter, which we haven't scouted yet. There's nothing you can do about it. I guess there's the, uh, the loathing tutorial. Now, for these debris piles, you obviously want to run over them. You get items. There's no reason not to run over them. All right, now we'll fully scout. As we said, this doesn't really matter for us. Hmm. All right, so Hoarder doesn't do anything for us because we don't really have money. So we will go to the lair. We will not fight uh, the boss, but we'll fight the early fights. And this is actually a pretty good route. We have two safe roads, as you see. So nothing bad will happen there. No resistance encounters is pretty bad. And also no really affinity screens. So this is not a great region. And assistance isn't that great as a location. But there's actually zero resistance encounters in this region. That's kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that. But we still take this path. This is the best overall path. We'll get the most overall. A simple choice. And obviously you'll see here, heroes have their own choices. Uh, it'll either heal one stress if you uh, choose their choice. Or it will take... Uh, it'll not. Uh, oh, and an interesting thing they changed in 1.0. Academic studies, which give you rare items or rare trinkets... If you scout them, it'll tell you what you get. And Unique Liquors is actually one of the best choices in the game. But unfortunately, we just don't want to take it. Theoretically, that's a decent route. I just like the Hero Shrine. Unfortunately, we can't do both Hero Shrines. Yeah, so we're definitely taking the left-hand path. I don't really you take into consideration this for the most part. I just take in account what's stronger for me. But occasionally, if I'm like, if it's a toss up, up. There is danger on this uh, then I will consider hero choices. Again, this is a hazardous road, so we'll lose armor. Means we'll lose our block, although we don't really have any fights in this region, so. Academic cash. You get your 12 relics, you get your 12 baubles, you get combat items. We did not get food. Normally we get food here. Uh, storage trunk is probably not necessary for us, honestly. Bleed resist isn't that relevant because we're in the bleed region right now. However, plus six speed is very relevant. I'm going to go ahead and put this on Dismas. This is our fastest hero already. This will basically guarantee he goes first. We can get our duelist advance up early. Also, we should probably give somebody bleed. Uh, heal. Just because we have it. Normally, I try and put my heal items on non-healers. Just so I have more... There are more turns where I can actually do healing. And, of course, we're going to do the hero shrine. You want to focus, like entirely on hero shrines if you're a new player 
Obviously, if you're a new player. We must understand the past if we are ever now, for me, I like doing Man at Arms first. Because he unlocks point blank shot. Obviously, you won't know which shrines unlock which. And shrines, you'll either one. get lore or you'll have to do a, Freedom. a puzzle fight, basically. I'm not a huge fan of the puzzle fights, frankly. Most of them are pretty straightforward, and some you have to lose, but... So here in this fight, it's kind of straightforward. You just uh, kill the enemies. Uh, you only have like three attacks. When you start out, you want to use Lunging Cuff, obviously. It's your only attack. Now we can just kill here. You also don't want to get this thing to happen. But I think I like killing here more than doing anything else. You get two actions per round, by the way. This makes it so you have an action economy advantage in this puzzle fight. All right, so this guy, when he inhales, he does a stress attack, I believe. So you generally want to get rid of that. And he does not act. I guess I should explain this. This is, you can use this in normal fights too. If you have multiple of the same type of enemy and you want to know what turn they go in, you can hover over the icon here. It doesn't work the other way around. And it'll show which one will actually go in which order. So we're just going to go ahead and move because you can only use stone missile, which is how you remove this thing from the back. So we move. And we stone missile the back. Remove that inhale token. Also gives us dodge plus, which is good. And he's going to inhale. So we can go ahead and stone missile here. And obviously there's no one to stone missile here, so we'll just lunge and cuff. Uh, knee strike only hits the first two targets. So we're going to lunge and cuff here. Although I think this corpse will be removed next turn. He's going to inhale, but there's really nothing we can do about it. I generally just like killing here. We also have dodge already anyways. We did not kill, unfortunately. And that goes through dodge. All right, so that gives them three st stress. All right. That's fair to take then. I actually haven't had that happen to me in a while because normally I just get rid of it. Anyway, we'll move back next round to deal with that. You're in pretty good shape with only two. So he's going to go last. So we can stone missile. Alright, so no one has the alarm this time, so we can just hit. Um, he is going last. So we'll get two turns, so we have a chance of killing him before he acts. Like I said, action economy is big. You want to kill enemies before they act. And we have a chance to kill before we act. Before they act. Inhale is whatever. We can't lose the fight at this stage, so that's good. Uh, he's going to sound the alarm no matter what. So we just lunge and cuff. Let's go for the kill. It'll take him multiple to kill us. Fight's over. Like I said, action economy is big. 
That one is pretty hard to lose, to be honest. Now we unlock point blank shot, which is our biggest nuke. It's only rank one to rank one, but it's still worth. So that means we want to rearrange our party now. We want Dismas to start in rank one and point blank shot. And you can only have five of skills unlocked at a time, so you have to remove one to add one. Tracking shot doesn't do any damage. It's very niche as far as skills go. Only really relevant against one boss. So I always point point blank on. Now we can get opening nukes. We did our hero shrine. Ooh, that's two hoarders, so we're not going to get that reward. I didn't realize it was two hoarders. Yeah, because... We're not going to visit that hoarder. It just doesn't make sense as far as loot goes. Because you want to balance your hero goals along with actually getting enough loot to win runs. As you can see, we're getting... We're getting affinity on the road. I just missed that for some reason. That's because we're at low stress. Emptied of mind and spirit Keeping stress down is very important. Shock. So you see, when you see supplies at the Oasis, I wonder if it tells you here, and related items, so it does kind of tell you, you always want to choose this option no matter what, if it's there. That's kind of unfortunate there. Here you get uh, mineral spring water, like I said, you heal 10%. And you heal stress. We're not going to need this this region, so I can go ahead and equip that. Slime mold we don't need. We can go ahead and get rid of that. Open up the map again, even though we know where we're going. I just always have the map open. Like I said, the hoarder doesn't offer us any value here. We're going to go straight into our first fights. The early fights in the lair will give you eight relics and eight baubles. And then, of course, the boss will give you much, much better rewards. So we'll see what condition we're in to see if we do two fights or one fight. This is a very challenging fight. Our team doesn't have great range for this. Alright, well, we're going to point blank shot. Just so we can move back and then start targeting the drummer. Even though we're going into block plus, so it actually doesn't do much damage at all. We're going to target the drum. Well, yeah, I mean, we want the guard token gone, so... We'll target the... I guess I should have explained how guard works. You have to target the guard to get rid of it. And the hero that's guarding will actually do the damage. Um, I'm going to go ahead and swing here. Like I said, action economy, you want to eliminate one enemy at a time for the most part. We were blind, so unfortunately we missed. These guys actually hit pretty hard. They recently buffed them in the 1.0 patch. Thankfully, they avoid my vulnerable hero. We're just going to go ahead and crush here. Actually, Rampart might be better. So Rampart will daze an enemy. Or at least have a chance. And that will make them act lax next round. That will make it easier to kill if they act last. Um, and this will roll against stun, which is the stat that says STN, obviously. So we have a 50% chance of dazing them. And it's basically the same damage, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, so he is guarded. We want to get the drummer down. So like I said, he is being guarded by... It's supposed to show you which one is guarding him. 
It's this one that's guarding now. Oh, it does show when you hover over the guard. You'll see he's hovering the first hero. So we want to break this guard by attacking here. And that's very unlucky. I guess it's not unlucky. It's where, kind of what he does. So we're taunted now. That means enemy will enemies will attack here, which is very scary. Um, we don't have a lot to do. It would take a crit to push this enemy to death's door. Actually, it wouldn't take a crit. That's an interesting thought then. This enemy is going next, but... Oh no, this enemy is dazed, so we don't even care about them right now. So I'm just going to do damage here instead. This enemy obviously has death blow, you can see. You have to get them to zero first. And then any subsequent time they take damage, then they roll against that death blow resist. And every time they roll against death blow, it'll get lower. All right, this is a little scary. We're going to get double targeted here. We have two options. We can take this kill. Actually, they will not go next. So, man arms will take this kill. I mean, I guess we just have to attack the drummer here. We're going to get double targeted, which is very scary. But she does have a self-heal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit here. We're guaranteed to push to death's door. And then this dot will tick before they act. And we'll have a 95% chance of them dying on this turn. All right, pretty good. All right, so we want to break this block. I would like to get Duelist Advance up, although I think this Vulnerable will go away this turn. The thing is, she's going to heal this round. I do want to break the block, though. Or the guard. So she has a self-heal. That's very good. This also gives her dodge and speed. So Grave Robber is normally okay. Uh, you've already taken more damage, so we'll go ahead and roll here. With the Blight. As you saw, Blight is very useful in killing enemies. Now we're going to go ahead and crush here. That's very unfortunate that they hit through dodge there. Now we have a chance to push to death's door here. We're going to take it. We did not get it. All right, you're going first. We're going to go ahead and go here to try and break the block. Or break the guard, I mean. We're not trying to break anything. We are guaranteed to do it. Now we have a chance to kill. We have to roll a six or better, which we can do. All right, we killed. And you saw we got a stress heal from a crit. All right, all we have to do is hit you with this, and you'll go to death's door and have a 95% chance to die on your next turn. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Here, dazed isn't useful because... They'll get dazed and then act again. You have to do dazed at the beginning of a round or before their turn for the round for it to be useful. So we're just going to crush. It's our best damaging attack. They hit through dodge again, unfortunately. But we're not in any actual danger in this fight. Now here we're just going to go for flat damage. You saw they gained affinity there. There are a couple ways to gain affinity in combat. There are revenge attacks. When an enemy attacks you and you attack them, 
the immediate next turn, you can get affinity. You can get affinity by moving around, and you can get affinity by uh, follow-up attacks, where you immediately target the same enemy that the previous uh, hero targeted. But that's RNG dependent on stress for the most part. So it's something to think about, but not like something you agonize over. All right, so we're pretty healthy. You also heal some of your HP between lair fights. So we're going to go ahead and try the next level. Because we really we did not get very many rocks or bobbles, so we're going to go ahead and do... Now, this is a very dangerous fight. This is a very dangerous enemy. Point blank shot is actually not that great in this region. I should probably say. Like I said, we're going to break this guard. Uh, Grave Robber crits on combo increases crit on combo. So that's something relevant. I kind of like blinding gas here. I'm going to be honest. We could also, uh, this would make a faster kill. I think I like blinding gas. This has a chance to blind. This night enemy is one of the toughest in the game. I'll say that right now. Getting him blind is very good. Very good. Very good. Knockback doesn't do anything. So we'll just do more damage with crush. On guard. Unfortunately, that'll give him repose tokens. It's a bit scary. All right, so here, I think I like getting dodge up and getting my repost up. So we'll target here. Now the damn. Uh, they also have increased death blow resistance here, so we could also choose this to maybe get bleed because he will bleed enemies. We do not want to attack here because he will counterattack us. So I think we do this. We either do this or we try and kill here. But we want to poison darts there, so we'll probably just roll on it. Actually, I kind of want to get rid of my blind token. You get rid of tokens, either they expire at three turns or you have to use an attack to get rid of the token if you're blind. And we want to not be blind next turn, so. Focus fire there is okay. They are dead. We're going to get attacked here. very unfortunate he hit through dodge there we do have bandages i'm not going to use them yet well it's a lot of damage to be taking i'm going to go ahead and try and push him back i'm okay with him taking the counter attacks although we want to heal now Unfortunately, he's going to constantly buff, so we're in really bad shape here. We just want to get the drummer down as quick as possible. I'm going to take this heal here. So he's healed before he acts. A calculated generosity. But a welcome one nonetheless. Unfortunately, he's going to double target every turn with this buff. It was questionable doing this fight, and it was questionable doing the fight like this. We want to use these bandages. Keep you off death's door. So if we crush here, we can actually heal with the combo token. He's also going to counterattack us. We at least get a slight heal. Alright, we want to kill him before he acts. 
because he takes a free action. This this buff is a free action. So we want to go ahead and kill him before his next action. Straightforward and effective. Now we can start in there, getting blight. We again want to heal this bleed. It's just too much bleed to handle. He's going to bleed us again, but it'll tick less. At low health, you can also get uh, that by healing. He still has his movement resist. Or no, he doesn't. All right, I'm going to get my repost up. I'm going to get one more heal off. Now, here's the dangerous part. We actually want to get him. So if we push him to death's door, he will get a buff. So I actually don't want to do that. Right now, he will take damage and go to one HP. And we cannot kill him. He's not going to die. He has 90% death blow resistance right now. So I'm actually going to absinthe. Basically, pause my turn. We got hit through dodge again is very unfortunate. We have no way of healing now. We actually might die. We want to do this to daze him. Although he's not likely to be dazed. Yeah, we might actually die. Go ahead and reapply this. We do have Wicked Slice that pierces death blow. So we survive. Now, obviously, we do not do this fight. Doesn't matter what the loot is. So yeah. Fighting that second fight was pretty dangerous in the tangle, I will say. But remember, we do heal while traveling. It'll be a while until our next fight. Because we have this safe road. Now we're going to assist encounter. This can increase our light. As well as... Um, we can get food. We can get items. It's just a variety of stuff can happen. Let us hope their desperation can be eased. So here's in items. Here is scouting. And there is just armor. And we have enough bobbles. Well, eight, eight, eight. Yeah, we do. So I think I'll take in items. Pipe weed is pretty good. That's a stress heal. Our loathing is a little out of control. That's just because we didn't get offered any fights this region. We just have to deal with it. Now we will face cultist enemies, which are pretty dangerous. I actually I'm not sure if I want sh I think I want you back here so you can use Duelist Advance turn one. Because you need dodge. You have very low HP. Also, before we forget we need to equip bandages here. So there's a decent chance we can die here. The altar is the hardest enemy here. I think I'm going to take aim. This will give us a guaranteed crit for next turn to defeat the altar. Also give us a dodge token. Now we obviously want to target the altar. Unfortunate no blight application. We're also blind again. A lot of unfortunate things happening. That's very unfortunate. They use that ability. So they're being constantly healed. We don't want to attack them. There's an argument for ounce of prevention. 
improve our dot resist. But I think I want to take an attack. Just be aggressive. Unfortunately, we're blind because of the yips. No resist is very unfortunate. Now, moving these guys is useful. Because they have different attacks in different locations. Unfortunate here that we don't get to utilize our crit fully. That's lucky they used the vulnerable there. We're going to keep attacking the altar. They give a permanent buff. Not sure why we're not hitting our blight. Just RNG, I guess. We'll go ahead and blight here. Try and do some damage. That's a scary ability with the crit. So again, we're going to try and daze here. We want to kill them before they can crit, which is not likely. But with days, it becomes more likely. All right, we have to heal that, unfortunately. I kind of want a dodge token, so I'm going to do this. We're going to have to ignore here because we want to kill before the crit happens. Sort of unfortunate. Although, I actually do like doing this, I suppose. If we high roll, we roll four or five and get a blight, we can kill this round. Although, we think I just kill here. Although, if they give a heal, they will move last. That's guaranteed. I think I try and kill the altar here. We didn't get it. Very un triple unlucky rolls. But that's just darkest dungeon for you. You just have to accept. Hit through dodge again. Very unlucky. But again, you just accept bad RNG rolls. A little help impeccably All right, so if you double daze, you stun. And that's what we're going to attempt to do here. We have a 60% chance of doing this. We also want to knock them back, obviously. Unfortunately, un very unfortunate resist. So they're going to get one more attack. But it's only Rush Judgment. Like I said, their attacks are weaker in the back. I'm going to get my dodge back up. I want to get them to Death's Door so they will die on their next action. Haven't had dodge proc once. We don't need to heal here. I want to preserve my heals. We're going to target here. A slow dissection. An unavoidable end. We're going to keep trying to kill back here. Uh, we are at four stress here. So normally I would say use laudanum here. But since this is the last fight of the region, I'm okay with four stress. All right, we, we did get lucky. We got the hit. Again, we want to daze here. I'm again going to do this to get my dodge up. We're blinded, which is unfortunate, but okay. All right, so we're not going to get to the only chance we have of killing here is if we crit here and then hit a big crush. 
We did high roll there. That might actually be enough. We're going to attack here again. An opportunity. All right, that's unfortunate. Wandered. So we can only kill with a crit here, which is unlikely. So we're going to want to try and knock them back. The days won't do anything, but knocking them back will. And they're going to be on death's door. Uh, once anyone hits death's door, either you or an enemy, then they will get two automatic weak tokens. So putting an enemy to death's door is very good. Not just to kill them, but also to weaken them. And obviously you'll notice I left this one last alive. This is the least... Now, with this horror, I am going to remove it so I don't continuously take stress. I like leaving Cherubs last alive. They're annoying, but they don't really do that much. I can crush here and take a heal. Fight through the fatigue. Actually, we should have healed here. That was a slight mistake. You do heal a little bit at the end, but not fully for the most part, depending on the end. Greater threats await those who dare. All right, we got this, which is not that useful. No cultist trinket is very unfortunate. I don't like that trinket. It gives you crit in exchange for healing received, which is not a good, not a good trade-off. The loathing festers. And this will always be a safe road. Right before an inn. So we have no food. And we don't have any money. And we don't have any affinity items. We have some money, but not enough. So all in all, pretty bad. But that's just how it happens sometimes. You don't get great regions. A little worse for wear. But... Also, every inn will have a different effect, so you always want to check that. Occultophobic. Amateur Weaponsmith is very good. We have three mastery from completing the goals. Let's look at our next... We obviously only get one choice here because it's uh, denial. Minus max flame is really bad. In the light is going to be very hard to do with heavy winds. We only have this, so we'll equip it. Uh, nothing we want to buy here with uh, bobbles. So you want to fully upgrade, fully repair your stagecoach for safety. So we have a couple of options here. We have playing cards, we have affinity items. We have food, laudanum, and clarifying poultice that are all good purchases. First, we look at our relationships to see where they're at. We do have a 12 relationship. Now, it's notable. These items can crit. They can crit affinity you. I think I'm going to go ahead and use playing cards these are RNG, but they give your whole party affinity. So it's worth worth the risk. On the road to damnation. You'll see now that at neutral, you have a 5% chance either way of getting a relationship. You want to get out of this neutral zone and get into the positive zone is the goal. Now, it does say plus one affinity here. That's how you should read it. But sometimes an item will crit and give you two instead. That goes for all of these. Now that was very worth it, you'll see. Because we're now in the positive zone here. And we're in the positive zone here. And we're very close here. So they are one away. Paracelses and Audrey. So we want to use an item immediately. Now they're at 14. We look at other relationships. They're all at 12. So first we look at Barristan. 
we're going to use pipe weed. This also lowers uh, stress, which Barristan has. We'll do this with him and Dismas to start. And then we'll use this whiskey flask to get them to 14. And now we only have one neutral relationship, Barristan and Audrey. And we do have these items. Now remember, these items can crit, so you only buy one at a time. Because if we get a plus two here, then we're done. We only got a plus one, so we do have to buy another. Now it's very worth it to get these relationships here. It's worth spending all your money. Now we can unfortunately only add a few things. Uh, I don't like using slime mold. Slime mold is not good. You don't want those random diseases. In this case, I'm just going to buy food for our tank and probably for Dismas because he's a frontliner. And then we can't buy anything else, unfortunately. But food is just really big. All right, we have three skills to master. First things first, we want to upgrade point blank shot. This improves our strongest attack currently. You're already basically fully upgraded. These two attacks are irrelevant for the most part. And that only gives you better dodge. So we want crush upgraded. And that's probably it. He doesn't need another upgrade. Wicked Slice is a nice upgrade, and so is Take Aim, but we don't need it. I'm thinking about Battlefield Medicine. This will give us a double chance at healing stress. Or at healing, at removing. This will give us uh, dodge dot removal on self as well as uh, your ally. All right, again, I'm going to save this. Save the rest of these items. Now we will tackle the Sprawl with no chance of getting a negative relationship, which is very good. We got one positive, which is fine. Again, the most important part is avoiding negative relationships because they will lock in your skills and also debuff your skills. Alright, so Crush will give dodge to Paracelsus and Battlefield Medicine will give strength to Barristan. That's pretty okay. He's in the back, so it's not super exciting for him to get dodge for the most part. But like I said, the main thing is to avoid negatives. Again, we will not fight a lair here. Behold, the great cities of man. So we do have an early watchtower. Ruined and a flame. The problem with the watchtower is it cut no, it doesn't restrict us at all, actually. Let's see what this is. Unsettling portrait. So we do kind of want more unlocks here. So as much as I want to do fights to get loot. And we're going to do a guaranteed fight there. This will also help us manage our equipment. So actually, this watchtower is really strong. Brace up. We also want to obviously find the hero shines. All right, this is our first combat. I believe it is Audrey who wants to kill pillagers. All right, this is our first ordainment. You cannot have ordained enemies in the first region, in your first full region. Um, these are basically just buffed enemies. You'll see them with the little crown here. They get more likely as you advance towards the mountain. Although bosses cannot be ordained. What can we learn upon closer and the ordainment changes based on which act you're doing. You can come to this screen with alt again. You hover and use alt. And then you hover this and you can see what benefits they get. They get 20 extra HP, 2 speed, 20 damage. And then they spawn with extra resistances to a random thing. So they need to be our first target. 
we're gonna hit here with pistol shot and we're gonna get here with poison darts and they will die in two turns now that gives us stress they're gonna hang out and guard each other I want to use this. So we're just going to rush him down. That's the goal. Uh, I'm going to use Rampart to daze him. Again, that wants to be our first target. We don't want to attack the Mongols yet because of these reposts. I forgot I want to move him into rank one. So far, we haven't had any dodges work, which is fine. All right, he is dead on his turn now. So we want to break this block and break this repost with man at arms because he has a block token and the most HP. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a turn to heal. Since, like I said, this enemy is dead. It has no death blow resistance and has the DOT. So we're going to just swing here. If we hit through the dodge, we'll kill. Like I said, we're targeting this enemy instead just to break the guard. You have to target the enemy that is being guarded to break the guard. We missed, but that's okay. We got good speed rolls. 50-50 chance to hit here. We can kill with poison darts. They do have high blight resist. Yeah, very unfortunate. I mean, not really unfortunate. Like I said, they have high blight resist. So, I don't really want to go into this for post, and they're going to die next turn. So I'm going to go ahead and just defend my Grave Robber. We're going to take a turn to stall out. Like I said, take a turn to stall out. Their next action, they will die. Gain some dodge here. Doesn't really matter what we do. And we just kill with the repost. I wanted to heal, but that's fine. We have roads to heal. I forgot we wanted killing blows. In the heat of the moment, I kind of forgot. But that's fine. More important to just kill there. Oh, we did complete. We did kill too. All right. So that's all of our goals. We need one more assistance encounter. That should be doable. We're not going to visit two hoarders. That's not a thing. It's all about maximizing candles early. Let's get to this watchtower, then we can plan out a full route. This region is also slightly, I believe it's one node longer than the previous region. The first region is slightly shorter. The value of such a view is matched only by its own settling awfulness. Only one hero shrine. I think, personally, I think hero, hero unlocks are way too slow. Oh, we did get two of them. I think hero shrines should be guaranteed. I believe two should be guaranteed in varying... So you can reach both of them, each region. And I believe... Um, that they should be fully scouted for you. That's my personal beliefs. I want to hit that hospital. We can hit the hospital in two ways. Although this is the only way to hit this hospital here. 
So we're going to go through this path. So let's see where this path leads. We have to go here to here. We likely want to do the fight. We're not that into the horror. But we are into the cache because that'll give us more loot and maybe food. And this is also a safe route here into a fight. We also want to fight because we like loot. Fights give you loot and reduce your loathing. Uh, then we're going to head into a hoarder, which is not ideal. Let's see what our loathing will be at. We lose one loathing here. So we'll be at one loathing. And then we'll be at two. And then we'll do the fight, but also get this. So we'll still be at two. Then we'll be at three. So this fight is maximum loathing. That is not ideal. We might do this route not so we do not buff the final boss. It's a little weaker academic study into hoarder. So minus one will be at one. We'll be at one. We'll be at two. We'll be at three. And how is this road on? We'll lose one wheel. And that's it for the full region. One wheel and one armor. Alright, so Watchtower is very useful. We are going to avoid max loathing. We're going to have to miss that, which is very unfortunate, but... I'm also not sure if we're actually going to have loot for this. We don't need to boost the light to like there, I think. So I'm not going to equip my items yet. So again, we're going to the far left. Guess we could have gone here instead then. We could have gotten a lair. Academic study can give us stuff though, so... Not a bad visit. Again, we want to do this fight. Wow. That is very, very unlucky. We have to do this and hurt these two relationships because we have to reduce the loathing. But that's very, very unlucky. That they don't. We've had very bad encounters, but that's Darkest Dungeon. You have to make the best of it. Even with bad RNG, you can push through it. Uh, I forgot to put point blank shot up first. That's really bad. So, this enemy here ignites these enemies. And these enemies can also self ignite. So, my priority is killing one of them first. So, we're going to do this. And then, we're going to do this. A slow dissection. And we're also going to finish them off here. That's okay there, because they don't actually get ignited. And repost is bad there. But we do want to hit here. Because we want to kill here before they ignite. So we're going to try and hit through that this dodge. We got lucky and hit through it. So this fight is now basically over. Well, this enemy is still dangerous. We're going to double target this enemy. Because they can also produce disease. We're just going to do this. Eliminate a corpse. We don't have corpse clear, which is a little bit scary early on. I'm going to refresh my repost and get my dodge back up. This enemy can still be dangerous on its own. Alright, this has a chance to crit.
And now we can crush and put her to death's door. Which will end the fight. We're at all three stress, so we don't need to use laudanum. A lesson taught is a lesson learned. Cut down these nightmares. All right, we got a mastery. Very good. We also got this. I just need to remember to take this off before we get to the mountain. It's extra debuff resist. The loathing whispers. Might actually go here for now because of the yips. All right, I'm going to remember to equip this. We'll need it in the next, not in the next fight, but in the fight after. All right, we're taking the academic study. Is your coach prepared for the upcoming obstruction? Academic studies are hit or miss. So I'd normally avoid this, it but like I said, indeed. we have to do this to avoid the loathing. Destruction. Enemy ambush is very unlucky. We also got worst ambush possible. Bad start. This enemy is not dangerous at all in that position, though. I'll say that much. I kind of want to kill the Mongol first because they are ordained. All right. We have a 15% chance of killing on a crit. Or we can just put a blight in. Potentially put a blight in. It failed. Probably should have went with the other choice. Alright, we're in very bad shape now. You have to move. This negative effect happened because of our affinity. It has a chance of happening. I'm going to bolster this turn. Get our stress relief in. Can move next turn. Agony. It's very Great scary. Regulation. I also want to reduce your stress to four. A small reprieve from this carousel of All right, now we're... We're going to self-heal that, obviously. That's actually crazy targeting. Then we're going to go here. Kill the dog, gu guaranteed. Again, dodge not proccing. Very cool. You see how powerful our post is there. Uh, we can actually attack with hold the line, so we're going to do so. That's an attack he has I normally forget about. Uh, it's only usable in the back, but it will mobilize him, move him forward all the way, and give him a block token, so it's pretty good. I'm going to take a free kill here. Although this is actually a higher chance of killing, I think. Then we take a guaranteed kill here. Right, and we killed right there. Don't get a chance to heal, but that's okay. Some of these fights can be dangerous. So you really want to be more prepared. All right, this is scary with the death blow resistance going down, but I like the stun resist. I'm not going to equip it right now because I don't value the stun or move resist right here in this region. But we will equip that for the final boss. An academic study. So this will give us either this will give us a positive quirk and also a random quirk. And this will give us a trinket and items and a random quirk. 
So I like taking this option. I don't actually remember what this one does. They do the same thing every time. In this world, wealth is worth so you definitely want to uh, learn all of these, which I haven't learned yet, obviously, even though I have a ton of hours. So copy all positive tokens. That's actually pretty interesting. I'll actually put that on Dismas right now. Since we can stack those Laudum there. I'm unsure when the will, will be the time to use it. And both. Hold fast. Now we've got a Hoarder coming up, which we do not really have money for. But like I said, this is the route we're taking. To get the most loot and also avoid loathing getting maxed out. All right, none of these trinkets worth buying. You see we have all these rare trinkets that do this. They cost 50. I'm going to save my money. The only thing I would have bought there is... Well, actually, I wouldn't have bought anything there. Alright, we're going to gain more stress doing this, unfortunately, but we're doing the fight. Ruts in the roadway. There is a barricade ahead. Alright, we're at five stress, which means we can stress heal. We got an easy enemy pool. Now... This enemy is one we haven't seen yet. This is among the most dangerous enemies in the game. Not most dangerous. It does a lot of stress damage. But he can only... you. What he'll do is he'll stealth on turn one if he's in the back two. And then do the big stress nuke the next round. Here, he's going to be slow. He's going to move back. And then he's going to stealth. But we're still going to just kill him this round. That is the goal. We don't want to use Laudanum here because we're going to use Bolster, and Bolster requires the Stress Heal Threshold. And we're just going to attack here. You'll be dead in two turns. Stun is fine. I'm going to go ahead and boost light. There is comfort in company. I'm going to do this just to get rid of this corpse. This enemy is quite obnoxious with stun and uh, everything else. So we're going to daze. I'm going to just use all our light here. We're going to daze here. Force them to lack ass, act last. Lack ask. And then just attack and kill. No one above four stress or at four stress or above. So we just kill. No one we can heal. All right, we got Blight Resist irrelevant entirely. You'll see that state, the trunk isn't doing much because we just don't have very many items. See, we're at low affinity or low... We're at low stress, so we gain random affinity on the road. We're doing this fight. So we open relationship screen. We look at Paracelses to see where their relationships are at. Uh, there are two. She's going to lose affinity with either Audrey or, Diz, or uh, Barristan. It's all the same. 
Basically, you want to avoid dropping into the neutral zone or the negative zone is what the goal here is. With this uh, path, we gain stealth, which is kind of cool. It doesn't really do that much for us, but all things are equal, so... So that drops them into the negative zone or the neutral zone again, which we'll have to repair at some point. All right, this is a very challenging fight here. Very, very challenging. I kind of like this. We just steal their block tokens. Well, we copy them. We don't steal them. Now, again, our goal is to kill here. 16. So we do 4 to 9 and then 4 to 10. Ooh, a very lucky crit. That means we just kill here. Again, you want to kill as soon as possible. Get your action economy advantage. This is very scary here. We're going to double target here. They're ignited. That means they unlock new skills. Let us take a That's why we don't know what they're doing, even though we've seen them before. Very lucky hit through the dodge. You're now dead in two turns. All right, since you are dead next turn, although you can be healed there, so it's arguable we kill there. I'm going to go ahead and break this block. We got to do two hits to get through this block. So this enemy is called Sacrificial. You can basically guess what it does by its what it's what it did on turn one. It wants to move to rank one, and it wants to heal, basically. Or it wants to get to rank one, and then it'll nuke your whole party. Otherwise, it does nothing. We're hoping for no funeral pyre. We did get funeral pyre. That means they'll heal there. So we're actually going to want to attack here, unfortunately. We got lucky again. So it will die. Very good RNG here. So we're in actually a pretty bad predicament here. So I want to Rampart here. Push them back. What does Upgraded Crush do? Oh, Upgraded Crush does do enough damage. So they'll die next turn, although they also have Funeral Pyre. So I'm going to go ahead and take this kill. Because remember, they can heal with Funeral Pyre. Cleared with impunity. And now we're just down to one opponent. Makes the fight much easier. All about action economy. All about action economy. We want to daze them. They do have death door. So we have to get them to zero and then get the killing blow. They go fast especially, so we like dazing them. We'll use our highest damaging attack. All we care about is pushing to death door. And that's actually one of the hardest fights we can get at this point in the game in this region. So that was a good win. We got very good RNG. Another of those trinkets. All right, we want to see the hospital. This is a interesting call, actually. Well, no, we want to... S mm. We want to get rid of the yips, but that costs us 16 relics. I'm going to say no. That changes our path, too, so a little awkward. This also gives us two extra candles. I didn't consider this route again because, yeah, 
that's not we don't want to spend all our candles there so we're gonna go ahead and go to this hero shrine An elementary problem. on the left side We just want, I mean, we want to buy food, maximum food. We want to buy items. We want to buy other stuff. Pretty basic fight here. We don't know which one of these is going to go first. We're targeting one of the front ranks because those are the ranks we can reach. Should have been here, actually, because we can point blank round two. Remember, action economy. You're now dead. I'm going to go ahead and daze here. This will also move Hyrumin back so he can do stuff. All right, so I don't know if we've seen it yet. No, we haven't. So these enemies, you saw they obviously combo with low blow. And then they try Finishing Blow. And Finishing Blow will, is bigger damage and does stress damage. But it can only be used from the front two ranks. So we want to go ahead and kill this one before it's action. Now we can only stun because obvious reasons. But that's okay. We're going to kill this round. Anyways. Again, pillager fight should be pretty easy, but the biggest thing is to get out of it with full health and uh, low stress. Ooh, that's very lucky. Been getting very lucky drops here. Which, I mean, you should be able to get to the last in, but actually beating the boss the first try... We'll give this to you for now. You have the highest stress. Notably, with that trinket, they can also resist stress on the road. Just the random stress you gain from the road. Or from, like, choosing a different path than they want. Alright, we got a free bread. That's worth eight relics. Remember, you always want to run over stuff on the road. So, none of their next skills matter much. I'm going to go with the Man at Arms because we want one of his next skills. Uh, we want... We're a couple away from Retribution, which is arguably the strongest skill in the game. Chapter one. This one isn't a fight, it's just lore. Premature promotion. The politics of a military career are perhaps as treacherous as war itself. So untested in combat, his acumen for advancement was unmatched. Through a dubious campaign of influence and intimidation, he had at last claimed a coveted command and was eager to bask in the glory of the victories that were sure to come. All right. We're going to gain Bellow, which is AoE uh, speed reduction and removes your post. It's not that relevant for us here. In fact, I like keeping on hold the line in case we get shuffled. But it's really useful in a lot of scenarios. Removing uh, torch is getting pretty low. We're gonna need uh, flame there. We're not gonna drop to zero, but we don't want to drop into shadowy yet, yeah, because we're gonna start. This fight's actually going to hurt us. Hmm. Unlucky again. Paracelsus wants to run. So Paracelsus is friends here. We don't want to drop any low with Audrey. We want to keep them both in range for uh, using affinity items with the next in to improve them. So I'm going to choose Dismas. Rather than dropping her further down. Remember, they'll always get minus two affinity here. So 
yeah, Paracelsus we're struggling with. Another pretty difficult fight. No ordainment, though, is very lucky. All right, in this case, I'm just going to get a dot, on, dot in. We're going to move you down to three stress. Since we can only kill with a crit. All right, she did not uh, light anyone on fire. That's good. Again, we're going to just kill you round one. Good stress resist. That's from the trinket. I'm going to go ahead and crush here. Start doing damage to you. Actually, it should have been crushed there to remove these tokens. So we missed. That was my mistake. Bad play on my part. We're going to try and take this kill before they act. That's six damage. They have 13 HP, so we have to do seven damage to them. They have low blight, so I think seven, six plus four is ten. So we'd have to high roll here. Or not high roll. Not a bottom roll. Alright. Good stuff. Got lucky getting through dodge. We did misplay. We should have uh, crushed there to get rid of the dodge, which would open up point blank shot. But thankfully, it didn't cost us anything. We want to keep you off three stress. We're going to wait till next turn when we can actually heal. We're going to take the dot tick in the meantime, but that's okay. Remove this corpse. Funeral power will heal himself, which is fine for the most part. Put you right back down to death's door. We'll get a free heal. And now, of course, we want a daze to make them move last next round. Although we're likely to just kill outright. Abandoned or forgotten. It is ours now. This is not worth it. 10% damage is nothing. The loathing of base. All right, we have no loathing now, so that'll help our flame drain go lower. This is no place for decent folk. I think we'll still be shadowy going into this. Probably. They all disagree again. We open the relationship menu. Again, we're just going to break this relationship here, I think. Actually, I think I do this. We Well, I get in items here. I think I prefer the in items. In crisis, no playing cards are good. Although playing cards are risky here. That's more hero goals completed. We're at dim light, which is good. There's no benefit or downside here. All right, we're about to face dip a difficult cultist fight. Either a deacon or a cardinal. This is a sort of mini boss. That was unlucky there. I didn't even know we had a negative quirk like that. Selfish. Oh, we have selfish. Yeah, that was from the uh, academic study. That'll be painful. All 
All right, we have the Cardinal. The Cardinal will shuffle us. That is their thing. So we want to eliminate the uh, altar first. Like I said, pick to the face goes through block. Unfortunate bottom roll there. So we'll explain this fight again when a bit when things start happening. That's terrible. So this fight, um, these enemies will start getting worship tokens. Any skill they do will gain worship, except. Uh, what can we learn upon closer inspection? Their weaker skills, like Rush Judgment, if you push them out of position, only has a chance. So that's something to keep in mind. When they get two worship tokens, on their next turn, they will use a free action to heal the Cardinal and remove all his dots. And they'll give the Cardinal one worship token, and then they'll use theirs. When the Cardinal gets to two worship tokens, he will utilize a, a rare, not a rare attack. He'll utilize a special attack that'll nuke you into oblivion. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Very, very unlucky resist there. We're going to have to take the kill. 30% resist there. So we want to kill before anything bad happens. We're going to focus them down. And that's ba that's the only play is focusing them down. Now, theoretically, you can focus down. If you have the damage, you can rush down the boss before these guys get in a, a chance to use their worship. But especially early when you don't have... Uh, good stuff unlocked. It's very, very difficult. All right, so the play here is to daze. We daze, they won't be able to worship until their next round. I'm going to go ahead and try and push you to death's door. We got our respectful proc. That's from our relationship. So they're 95% to die. I don't want to take a chance with worship. No, I probably do want to take a chance. 95% chance they die. No, let's just guarantee it. It's probably better to just take a hit there. All right, in this case, I'm going to take a turn to bolster. Get your stress back down. Now we can start the fight. Unfortunate resist. Especially since the resists are actually quite low. Hollow Vessel is scary. Gives them all the dots, plus uh, we're going to again try and daze. All right, now we can just start doing damage. Like we're going to do this to do more damage, theoretically. Because we want to push to death's door, right? That's the plan. We're going to do that for stress relief. Kindness. So, I would love to heal this stress, but in this case, I actually want to uh, push you to death's door. Because you do a lot of stress, you do a lot of damaging things. We're going to push you to death's door and hope the dot works. It did not work. 
pretty unlucky. Very, very unlucky, actually. And we're not going to be able to stress heal before that happens, so I'm just going to take the kill. All right. Pretty unlucky. We're going to need stress relief at this inn. We do have one stress relief item. Misstep is good. I'll explain that the next screen, how that works. The loathing of base. So these special cultist trinkets, you have to use a dark impulse. So you have to combine these two, unless you have the shambler's pet, which is a very late unlock. Um. So this item will reduce your damage, but increase your max HP. Paracelsus does not do much direct damage. Noxious Blast is mostly Blight, so this will only affect that 3 to 4 damage. It won't affect her Blight. So she is the best choice for this trinket. And you'll see it boosts her HP to, inc to crazy range. This means you can just select this. This trinket gives healing received and reduces move resist, which is fine. We'll give you extra stun resist. All right, so we have trinkets for everybody. That's actually really cool. Not going to use this. All right, so we defeated this cultist. That's the big, that's what you want to do in Act 1. That's your top priority after, you know, candles and unlocks. Uh, once you defeat here... Once you defeat this, then you will get your maximum candle rewards. Which will give you more unlocks at the altar your next time. The place is a little worse As you see, 10 candles. But familiar nonetheless. Flawed release is unfortunate. Peacemaker is really, really good. Wow. This gives negative relationship chance. Hydrophobic is kind of annoying, but it doesn't matter at the current moment. So. Audrey has gained Peacemaker. This means she cannot get negative relationships in the neutral zone. So we do not care about Paracelsi. We don't care about increasing this. Because there's a 0% chance of a negative relationship. We would like to increase it, obviously, to get a positive, but that doesn't matter. However, you have to increase with Dismas and Barristan. Now, playing cards are RNG. I'm going to have to see what we have on offer at the stagecoach or at the provisioner can, as far as affinity no has meaning if indeed it ever did so i'm okay with reducing speed so i'm gonna buy one pipe weed a bit of comfort on the road to damnation and paracelsus and dismas need one this will also reduce Dismiss's stress to zero. And now we will purchase one for Barristan. And this theoretically can crit, but we might have to use another one. We're not going to use the playing cards. The RNG could hurt us because we're so close to some of the thresholds. So we'll have to buy a second. We don't want any chances of negative relationships here. So we'll make the heavy investments. So because of this, we have 0%. Because of this Peacemaker, we have a 0% chance of getting any negative relationships at the mountain. That's very, very important. We use this, obviously, to heal our terrible stress. That's really unlucky. Very, very unlucky. Another negative quirk. Alright, you're already pretty fast. We'll make you fast as well. 
We'll get two fast heroes. Bleed resist on you, I guess. All right, now we want food. Well, we don't need food for Paracelsus. His HP is fine. We'll take one food. And then we can buy two things max. Could be stress heal. And it could be stun poultice. What are our combat items? We have no combat items. We have one of these. We have one laudanum and three mineral spring water. These increase stun resist, which is very good. I'm going to skip the stress heal. I just don't think it makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and buy two of these. We're not going to have any items. It's a little unfortunate going into this. We'll only have these. These need to go on someone that's not our healer. So we're going to buff our... We're going to buff you. And we're going to make you immune, I think, to stun... We'll also do that on our tank, which is you. Each improvement, a new variable in the equation of your fate. All right, this is actually interesting. None of these trinkets matter, but I believe this can give us a chance to produce a contraption. We have no other, no other way to spend that, so. And the storage trunk doesn't matter. Your academic instincts I think it can produce items level. before the uh, the cultist fight, so maybe we'll get chance for items. One learns quickly when survival demands it. All right, we have a few options here. Take aim plus is actually pretty good. I'm gonna take it right now. Your heals don't matter. The blind doesn't really matter. Theoretically, it could matter. I'm going to pick up Defend. This will give us Block Plus. And Rampart will allow us to stun on combo, which we do with Point Blank. We're going to move him to rank 1. Although not for the next region because we want to be able to hit the back rank. Or not for the Cultist fight. Alright, we are not set up well. Once again. Except for the fact that we have all... We have no negative relationships. I mean, you're basically resistant and stun. And then you two are fairly resistant. And we have decent HP across the board. Stress is high. And we have no combat items. But like I said... Every league a lesson. We're going to get decent candles. We would like to win our first try, obviously. And obviously we're going for it. There's no reason not to. All right. Whew. We get two relationships. Tried and Respectful is very good. A bond to be counted on. We give dodge to on point blank shot. That's very, very strong. Hopeful is only stress uh, re recovery. That's good, but nothing crazy. Although hopeful can also heal stress with the random act out. All right. In Act 1, you face only one cultist fight in the mountain. It will always be a deacon or cardinal. At last, the great ziggurat. Temple of failure and regret. Uh, you don't need to go up next. We take the very long scenic route to the mountain.
There's our cultist battle. And you can't avoid it at all. You just have to take it. Now, affin affinity doesn't matter here, obviously. So you just take the battle advantage. Although that actually, is that a bleed debuff? Because if it is, that's not very good for us. All right, we got a deacon. Not ordained deacon, thankfully. Although you are ordained. Yeah, so they have no, less blight resist and bleed resist. That's good. Uh, we're going to focus on the herald. They do stress damage and they do... Uh, we didn't upgrade pistol shot. It's unfortunate. They also AoE do AoE damage. So they're very dangerous. Fairy on call is okay. And then we also want to focus here since we can't do damage backline. Sundering Steel is a big, big damaging attack. So we want to knock back, obviously. We didn't get it, but that's okay. Didn't get the stun either. There's a chance of bottom rolling here. So I think I'll just open Duelist Advance. Lethality writ large. Very good RNG with the crit. Yeah, we are guaranteed to blight because of this DUF resist. So this is a guaranteed kill. The kill the Herald before it acts. Weight of the Worlds is AoE. Also does stress. Pretty scary. Incremental. We cannot yet heal that. So I'm going to push Death's Door here. All right, this is an interesting conundrum. I guess we'll probably kill here. I'm going to take the chance of stun here on combo. We did get the stun. That is action economy. I'm going to use point blank here to give dodge plus. Alright, I'm just going to take the chance that they die 95%. We can get the heal in here. It's very important. Alright, we cannot daze again. Because of his stun resist chance. And I want point blank to happen, so we're just going to crush. Just a simple crush. All right, good speed rolls. We can get a dot up. We can get a point blank in. Actually, unfortunate. We're not going to get to death. We're going to get him to death's door, but he will get one more attack off. And that's stress too. All right. Pleasant in the extreme. This work is noble and necessary. Now it's time for the lock fight, which will take a little time to explain once we're there. We're not in great shape because of the stress, but we should be max HP because of the wheel healing. So let's advance. Cathedral. Now we're basically max the HP. I removed Dismas up front so he can point blank. As I said, it's his strongest damaging attack. Right, pretty good setup. Right. So, each of these locks will, each turn at the beginning of the round, they will lock one skill from your uh, team. 
This one does ranged. This one does melee. This one does healing. This one does uh, stress healing. In addition, when they die, each enemy will... Um, each hero will give a different buff to the remaining locks to try and make up for the action economy advantage. This will give a damage buff. This will give uh, just straight healing. Not a healing buff, just it'll heal them all for 30 HP. This will uh, give a chance of blind and dodge. And this gives crit, I believe. So obviously you want to target whichever lock you have the most skills of. Our team is balanced, however. So, uh... Normally, you do end up just targeting... Like, we're going to target whichever enemy has the, uh... Is the easiest to hit. And all our damage is front row for the most part. So we're just going to go one at a time. Melee lock is a decent choice because we do have melee skills. And then healing next is nice because they don't give a buff to the others. They just heal them, which if you're focusing down one at a time, healing shouldn't matter. And this also locks your healing skills, so that's pretty important. And we'll just end up, we'll probably do the ranged damage next. And then you almost always leave this one last alive because stress healing isn't that important here. You normally just do damage. So we're going to focus this lock down first. Obviously, our ranged damage is locked, so we're going to use Take Aim to prepare for next round. Paralyzing Fear on our easy-to-paralyze hero is very unfortunate. Uh, we have all our skills locked because of this, so I'll just put up Ounce of Prevention. In crisis, we can rely only upon each other. It's lucky, I guess, because they're already stunned. Wow. Very, very unlucky. Very unlucky turn of events overall. Um, we could defend, but we're just going to have to deal with... Sometimes you got to deal with that RNG. Unfortunately, it went through the dodge. Is no time to falter. Man, that Vaughn is brutal. I don't think I can afford to heal. We're just going to keep attacking. Unfortunate. That's crazy that they get double blind. Not only do they get double blind, but also huge damage. I'm going to defend our healer, since we can't do anything else. I'm not going to use heals until they're on death's door, because we have limited heals. That's very, very unlucky again. Wow. Very, very unlucky indeed. Uh, we're just going to heal. This will also give us dodge. It's completely random. They don't go in any order, so sometimes you get unlucky. Good defend. Good targeting. Debo subject is brutal. Let's take a self heal, I guess. Although you have, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You're still defended though for a turn, so. Unfortunately, we're blind. I think this... I think these enemies have too much blind for me. Alright, we're finally getting our first kill. Point Blank is going to kill so we can move on to the next lock. And the next lock will be here. Of course, we're blind still from nonsense. 
So yeah, this difficult. This fight is very difficult. You have to. I mean, it's not difficult if you have a good team, but with the opening team, you can definitely get bad RNG. Like that's bad, really bad RNG to get hit again through dodge. So don't be too upset if you lose the fight. Obviously, I shouldn't really lose this fight. All right, I like days in this scenario. It's only 50-50, but it's worth a chance. Again, you see I'm not stress healing because I don't care. Do not have reach again. This one hasn't gone at all. That's really unlucky. Stunned. Not going to bother healing yet. I guess I might as well heal, I guess. Yeah, we just... It's about as bad as RNG as it can get. You just have to accept it. Alright, that's actually... That's bad. Meltdown doesn't really matter, though, because they're already on death's door. Just lose affinity. All right, we got to heal one of them. We'll heal our healer. She can self-heal anyways. And then again, we're going to keep... All right, let's not get unlucky again, please. Thank you. Means we can get our point blank in. All right, I'm not going to heal here. We're going to go for the kill. Oh, this does not... Damn it. We're going to... We're going to take a risk here. They did target us. Thankfully, we got lucky. It's pretty unlucky targeting, though. All right, so we can heal. Now we have to avoid two death low hits, which is very, very hard. We got lucky once. I mean, you can't really do anything. Can't really do anything about RNG. Um, we actually have to kill here or else they'll heal. All right, this is going to come down to the wire. We're going to focus on this one next. We don't want our ranged attacks locked up. We need our dodges to hold. That's basically what it's, this comes down to. Our dodges aren't holding. So she's dead. We're just going to have to accept it. Daze is really good. Well, Daze doesn't matter here, actually. With the beginning team, you just got to hope you get the right RNG rolls with your dodges. We also can't use that. We're about at... It's about the time when we cannot no longer use that. This is a bit scary. So another chance they have to kill her. I think I'm just going to do... No, we have to refresh, unfortunately. Our dodge and repost. Oh, they're dazed, so yeah, we will get a heal. We're about out of uses for these, so... Big, big heal. Go ahead and use this on myself.
The days doesn't matter, but again, I want to... Well... Yeah, we want to be able to use Retribution. In the next round, we will kill. Alright, we're in pretty good shape now. Especially with that crit. This does exactly 8 damage. Good enough for me. And that's a meltdown. No, pretty close to a meltdown. Alright, we can actually stun here. 50% chance. Alright, the fight is in hand. It was difficult and we lost our Plague Doctor, but... Alright, so that was a stress heal, but it blocks stress heals. I actually think they should probably change that, in my opinion. So you can still get the benefits from that. Alright, we'll kill next turn. A lot of bad stuff happened, but in the end, we prevailed. Getting stun resist. At last, Getting the right upgrades. Mind is free to remember a time before the cancer we also survived one death low check, so we also got pretty lucky. Actually, it might have been two. I think we still win without surviving those, though. So You can win on your first run. Pursued is rewarded only with if you win, you obviously get a great bonus. 74 candles. We're going to get a lot of unlocks here. <laughs> and that will continue on our next episode. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, trying to give you guys some tips on beating this run, beating this game. Even on a fresh profile, you don't need unlocks. Unlocks are helpful. And you obviously need them later, but just playing smart, you can handle, you know, the first region. Maybe even the second. Anyway, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all next time.